This is from Tura, June 2nd, 2011. Five questions to jumpstart your wanting. Some of you have been having difficulty understanding how on earth you are manifesting the things that are showing up in your reality. And understanding that seems like a logical place to start. So let us review some of what we've been telling you with perhaps a slightly different slant. Just to refresh, here are the absolutes, the things that just are, that you are not at choice about. Firstly, you are a part of the pure positive energy of all that is. And, secondly, the law of attraction is the principle by which everything flows. That's it. Everything else is a choice, and all choices are now choices. In other words, there is nothing in some sort of past, like one of your imagined physical pasts, and nothing in your timeless non-physical experience that limits your ability to choose anything in your now. So what is this choosing we are talking about? Well, you are choosing all the time, mostly by default. In other words, you have by your prior choices established a huge tapestry of subconscious beliefs about everything, physical things and non-physical things. From these beliefs come your expectations. By the law of attraction, from your conscious and subconscious expectations, mostly subconscious, you create or attract your world. You are the only one creating in your world because what shows up there is always a life mirror match to the sum of your expectations and you are the only one who is choosing what you expect. For your physical surroundings you may know about time and space, atoms and molecules, solids and liquids and gases, land and sea, earth and moon, sun and stars. So you expect that your world will show up in this way and that way and that night will follow day. About you and your physical world, you may know your past, your age, your body and how it will change over time, your family and friends, that you need money and you have to work to earn money, that surprises occur, that good and bad happens, all manner of things. About the non-physical world, you may know about God and the devil, past lives and karma, hierarchies of angels, spirit guides, Akashic records, astral planes, extraterrestrials and so on. Whatever you choose to expect, your world, both physical and non-physical, will conform. You will come across evidence to support your beliefs. You will attract into your world intersections with the versions of others that believe and expect as you do. You might be thinking now that, yes, some of those things are choices, but surely if some of them just are. Well, no. The only things that just are are the absolutes we started with. Not that there is anything inherently good or bad about any of these choices. Good and bad are human judgments. The way you choose to play the game is up to you. And it doesn't matter what past choices you've made, now is now. There is nothing that makes one choice higher or lower, more or less worthy, more noble or sacred, more selfish or selfless than any other. No choice is good or bad. There are only choices that bring you joy and others that do not. So now you know the rules, it's time to start wanting again. Let's go back to square one here and look at some questions designed to rekindle in you those powerful natural desires that are a fundamental part of who you are and point you squarely in the direction of change and creation and fun. Question one, what do you want? What would you want if you could have anything? You are all joy-seeking beings. As a child, you spend a lot of time in an imagined world of no limits. But then you learn to be sensible. You learn time and time again that in the real world you have to limit your wanting or you'll end up with a lot of disappointment and frustration. And so you did. Some of you pushed your desires down so far that you no longer recognize them, but they are still there. We invite you on an exciting journey of rediscovery. Give yourself a treat. Spend some time. Just one minute right now would be a good start. And ten minutes a day as you get in the swing of things would be a wonderful habit to develop. Blot out the real world. If you could have anything, 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 what would you like to have to experience in this world or any world? Now pick one of those things. Start with one that seems not too fantastic. Why do you want that? 
pursue that question back to the core of who you are and the answer will be for the fun of it because it feels so good. And this, by the way, is the only justification, the only reason you ever need. This is your world. You owe nobody anything. There's nobody that needs you. There are no shoulds. There is only you and your now creations. As you let yourself step into this new world, notice when negative thoughts come up. Any negative feelings are simply and accurately telling you that this thing that you want is out of line with what you expect. There are habit expectations holding you back from who you want to be. They come from what you know and believe. But remember, these are all choices. Probably long established and well practiced, but choices nonetheless. There is nothing absolute about any of them. Often there will be a how. Learn to recognize the how thoughts, the thoughts that leap to the question, but how do I get there from here, and let them go. How, in the sense of doing things, of making things happen, is not your job and it never was. The real how for you is learning new expectations. Question 2. What do you really expect? Think about this question. This is not about what you hope for. This is you being as honest as you can be about what you actually expect. And as you go into your background thinking, go deep. Question 3. What is the belief behind this expectation? Now as you go into your background thinking, go wide. You may or may not have a specific belief about the particular issue, but there will be something or possibly several things at play here. It may be a general belief such as, things never work out for me, or I'm not worthy, or those people are unreliable. Explore this territory. It's the land called, these are my habits. As you identify each belief, think a little about why you chose to believe that. The information may have come from a reliable source, a parent, friend or teacher. It may be something you chose to believe about yourself. It may have been an experience you chose to hang on to. In any event, it doesn't matter. Whatever the reason was, you chose it and practiced it. Now is the time to switch to your only truly reliable source, your inner guidance system. Question 4. What is the new belief you want to start practicing? Be clear about it. Put it into words. Start practicing it. Every time the old thought arises, practice again. It's like switching from driving a car on the right side of the road to the left. It took you a while to learn the original way while you taught your subconscious what to believe and expect. And it may take you a while to learn the new belief. But you can do it practice. You are simply changing habits. Question 5. This last question is the one we started with. What do you want? Go back to that joyful place and enjoy it all over again. See yourself. Imagine yourself in the world as you want it. Become a delicious daydreamer. And finally, as in all these things, starting is the first and most important step that as you gain confidence in your creative ability, you can venture into new creations. We promise you it gets easier and easier. Above all, be relaxed about all of this. Let it be fun. And as always, we are here to hold your hand. You have but to ask.